Matthew Hudson recently wrote about the next frontier in surveillance for the Atlantic, and he's here to tell us more. Matthew, good morning. Good morning. The scariest part of this is that, uh, is that cameras are going to be invisible, essentially? It, it looks that way. Uh, so they keep getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, already we have robots that can mimic animals. There's a drone that looks just like a hummingbird. Mm -hmm. There are various labs that are developing robots that can move like snakes. Mm -hmm. um, so they can mimic things that you might see in the natural environment and they can carry cameras or microphones. Mm -hmm. And eventually they're gonna keep getting smaller and smaller uh, until you can't see them anymore. And what's the market? I mean, who's doing this development? Is it just intelligence agencies or are these private companies? A lot of it is actually academic labs, uh, engineers and scientists at universities who are working on these things. Mm -hmm. So the, the value of the data they collect essentially becomes what? I mean, what, what, gets, what, yeah. what can they use with this information? Uh, a big motive is security, mm -hmm. uh, either private security or uh, diplomatic security or law enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also um, commercial uses. People might want to observe human behavior uh, to see how to market best to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are also private citizens who want security in their own homes. Mm -hmm. So is closed circuit television, you know, you see it on the news, news clips catching someone in the act. Is that just so old hat? I mean, is that even used anymore in a serious intelligence situations? Uh, cameras are definitely used. So it used to be closed circuit where you had to go on site to look at a videotape. Uh, now these things are hooked up to the internet, so you can be anywhere in the world and watching cameras uh, focusing on people. And they can be really useful. They can, they've been used to, to catch bombers, for instance. So that's a 1960s technology that's still relevant today. Definitely. I mean, you're always going to want to see what people are doing uh, from afar. But there are obviously, I mean, we've talked about this as, as the prevalence of cameras has, has increased. There are privacy concerns yeah. here. I mean, at what, point, at what point are you crossing a line? Definitely. That's always the, the trade-off between security and privacy. So these things might keep us safer, but they also uh, can make you feel like you don't have any more privacy and uh, you can't go about your daily life the way you would want to. I mean, how, I mean, how intrusive does it look like cameras are going to be? I mean, given they're on the streets now in places mm -hmm. we don't even rec we don't even, they're all over when you look up. Uh, I mean, how far is this going, do you think? Well, they're actually, they're moving into our homes too. So there's, there's smart homes and the internet of things. So people are dev buying devices mm -hmm. uh, that, that track their behavior. Uh, like Amazon has the, the Echo, for instance, yes. and, and smart TVs and phones. Uh, so it's going to be to the point where no matter where you are, you can't assume that someone isn't watching you or listening to you. Because everything is hackable. Exactly. I mean, if you, call, if you want to call a device unhackable, that's one way to bet that it's going to be hacked. Mm -hmm. So the more information we collect and the more data that's out there, that's more information that can be used against us. Right. All right. Matthew Hudson, thanks so much for being with us this morning.